Welcome back to the farmstead. We're glad you're here. I'm Greg Burns and today we are feeding the bees. Now there are a bunch of different types of feed. There's a bunch of different types of feeders and a lot of different ways to get the feed to the feeders. Today we're using ProSuite out of our tote and we're using a Harbor Freight three inch full trash pump to pump it into one gallon buckets. Now this is a pretty awesome combination for us in our context. The Pro Suite is about 11.8 pounds per gallon, so it's a really heavy feed, somewhere right around three to one or so. While mixing sugar is great for a one to one or a two to one, something like Pro Suite is great for us because it's, it's shelf stable and it doesn't freeze. So it can sit here in this tote and I don't have to worry about it. And for right now, where we are with growing a bee yard, I like that and I actually need that. Any way I can save time and still do a good job is something that we need to help push our operation just a little bit more in the positive direction. It's the 1st of October here in Ohio. We can typically bank on a goldenrod flow. This year, it's been absolutely horrible. It was really, really dry. And then when the goldenrod finally started to bloom, we had a bunch of rain and it hasn't really done us any favors at all. And one way that I can kind of gauge if the bees are going without, um, in these areas where we do have some feed and where there might be a little bit of seepage, whenever I see a big congregation of bees, big clouds, or a lot of extra activity all of a sudden around where there might be any kind of trace of sugar, it, rem it reminds me to get out there, take a look, and make sure the hives are doing okay. So right now, being the 1st of October, I want to put some more weight on some of these colonies, especially in the nuke yard and in some of these yards where um, we've done some splits. Today, we're going to put about 100 um, gallons on uh, these colonies, uh, and then we'll get the rest of the colonies fed probably later on this week. So let me kind of walk you through what we're doing here. So our pro suite is coming out of a two inch valve. We have it upsized to a three inch intake hose. Now I'd like to change this two inch valve out to a three inch if I can. That way I have a full three inch flow all the way to the pump. But we've got three inch line uh, coming into a shutoff valve which is going right into our Harbor Freight pump. From this pump, it's gonna shoot out to a T, and on this T, we have a, a discharge line, and then we have our feed line. When we're actually filling up our buckets, we pop our plug out and start to fill these buckets up. Whenever I would you know, let off um, of the feed, it's gonna build a little bit of pressure. Now, rather than having that pressure build up into the system, what I've done is I've put a little valve on here where I can just cut it open just a little bit. So any of that back pressure coming from the pump can go right back out this two inch line and go right into the top of that tote and then keep that recirculated. So it's, it's not a complicated system. It's really, really easy. We've got ProSuite Pro Suite coming into our intake to a shutoff valve. Now what I do with the shutoff valve is I usually leave the shutoff valve off. When I get the, the pump started, then I'll go ahead and crack this thing open and let that fluid um, kind of flow through. These, are, these pumps actually work really good. Um, when it's about 80 degrees outside, when the, when the feed is a little warmer, it'll fill a bucket in probably three seconds, real close to that. When it's cold, like this morning, it's been in the 50s, um, it's gonna take a little bit longer for that syrup to flow, get into the pump, and then push through. It may take about eight seconds to fill up that one gallon tank. So this, this pump does a great job, but there are limitations, just like with anything else. One thing that I have learned is when you are finishing up feeding, you want to turn your fuel off, your fuel uh, feed off, and you also want to make sure you get all of the feed discharged out of the pump. Um, and you, you, you only do it maybe a couple times before you remember. That much, th this ends up holding about four gallons is what this pump holds, so, somewhere close to that. Four gallons times 11.8, that's a lot of weight and a lot of viscosity in that pump. So the next time you come back to restart it, like this morning, uh, I forgot to do that. Uh, and it's just, it's just really hard to pull. If you wanna see more on how we build these buckets, um, you can check out our video on how to build these one gallon bucket feeders. Also, in January, in Sevierville, Tennessee, We'll be at the Hive Life Conference with Cayman Reynolds uh, and we'll be selling these buckets. We're going to sell these buckets at a discount for folks that are going to be at that conference for pickup only at the conference. So keep an eye out uh, on our website at naturesimagefarm.com. 
and be on the lookout on future videos and we're going to release a discount code uh, for all the Hive Live folks. So they can save some money and pick up these bucket feeders at the conference. Uh, and if you want to build these yourself, the, we have the plugs and all the tools to do it right on our website as well. And you can check that out at naturesimagefarm.com. Let's go ahead and get the Kubota backed up. We're going to get maybe 100 gallons or so filled up and taken up to the bee yard and get some of these bees fed. Let's get after it. Using bucket feeders has really been a game changer for us in the bee yard. We can get a lot of feed out to a lot of colonies in a really short amount of time. And that's really helped out speed up how long it takes to do bee chores. Uh, and that's really important when we're trying to grow a bee yard. The buckets are really handy. You can move them around. You can grab two, three, four at a time. Put them right on top of the hives. Move them from yard to yard. Move them from where you feed to where your yards are. And I think that's really handy. It's a really helpful way uh, to not make a mess and to make quick work of feeding bees. The plugs that we use are great. You can use the same plugs that are in the lid. You can cut a 50 millimeter hole right in your hive lid and plug up the hole, pull the plug out, put your bucket right on top, and you're good to go. It's really neat, it's really handy, it's a nice clean finish. It's great in the winter time when there's snow, when there's rain, it keeps the colonies dry, keeps them warm, and uh, it's, just, it's a really great and easy, effective way to keep the bees fed. They're great on singles, on doubles, 10 frame boxes, 8 frame boxes, and that's not all. Bucket feeders are also great on 5 frame nukes. Even 3 frame boxes with a 5 frame lid on top works great. So no matter if it's a 2 or a 3 frame colony, a 5 frame nuke, an 8 frame box, a 10 frame box, bucket feeders sure are handy. Hope this video has helped show how we feed our bees and maybe it'll give you some ideas on how you can feed yours too. If you liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, help us out. Give us a big thumbs up. We sure would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Remember, be the lighthouse and be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.